done a complete start to finish retouching video for quite a while, so I thought in this one I'll take you through all the steps in Lightroom and Photoshop for this recent portrait I took of a friend's dog. Now I only took a few photographs of the dog because originally I was photographing my friend Trigger and when packing Kit away, his dog got up on the chair. So how could I not just grab a few frames? Now this is the out of camera image, which to be honest could have been better, but in my defense, you know, I'd already started packing Kit away from taking Trigger's portrait, then the dog got on the chair and I just grabbed what I could to rattle off a few photos. Uh, we did actually try changing the background behind the dog, moving the lighter blanket behind him, but to be honest with you, I actually preferred the darker version and thankfully Lightroom and Photoshop can do all the heavy lifting and bring out all the detail we want. So in Lightroom, in the Develop module, we'll go to the Basics tab, and in here I'll increase the Exposure, and also the Shadows. And already, just using those two sliders, that's made a huge difference. I'll then add a little bit of clarity, not too much because there's a technique I want to use in Photoshop that will really make the image pop, and also add a little bit of texture, which is kind of like using the old Micro Contrast slider in Topaz Detail, if you ever remember that one. Then I'll go to the Tone Curve. Now in here, I like to use this to change the value of pure black. At the moment, the output is zero, which means black in my image is pure black. Instead, I like to increase the value of black by clicking in the bottom left corner and dragging upwards. This changes the value of the deepest, darkest black to whatever you change the output value to. You can see now when I turn that off and on what it's done. Now the higher I drag upwards, the more I start to affect the mid-tone areas and even up towards the highlights. So to prevent that, I click on the line and drag down to bring the rest of the line down to its original position. So now if I turn it off and on, you can see what it does. Now you might think that this is exactly the same as using the black slider in the Basics tab, but really it isn't. Let me just show you. I'll go to grid view and create a virtual copy of the image we're working on and give this a different color label so I know which one it is. Then I'll remove the tone curve adjustment from this copy and instead then go to the basics tab and increase the blacks. Then I'll put both of these images side by side so you can see the difference. So I'll go to grid view, click on the left image which is our original one first and then shift click on the other image, the copy and then press C to go to Compare View. Now the image on the left is the original using the Tone Curve adjustment, and the image on the right is using the Blacks slider. I much prefer the look on the original image. It's maintained the original colouring, nothing has shifted other than softening it and reducing contrast by raising the value of black. Anyway, moving on. Let's delete this virtual copy and carry on with our original image. So now I'll add some sharpening, around 25-ish, and I'll use the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and drag the masking slider over so that I restrict where the sharpening appears, which is on the white areas of the mask we can see in the main image area. Now let's play around with some light and really use it to direct the viewer to look straight at the dog, and we can do that using a couple of masks. So first of all, I'll click on the masking section and choose a radial gradient. I'll change the view to 25% so I can see all around the image, and then I'll click in the middle and drag outwards. Now if I use the exposure slider, that will darken the middle of the gradient, which we don't want. So I'll click on invert to darken the outsides, which then creates this vignette. Then I'll add another mask, and this time I'll use a brush to brush over the dog's face and then increase the exposure. Now I won't go crazy, I'll just use a small amount, which will make a big difference, as you can see here now, if I go before and after, before and after. And this is what it looks like with both of the masks off now, the vignette and the brush. Here we go, before and after. A huge, huge difference. Finally, now let's make sure we enable profile corrections are on, which they are, and then just to see if any of the other profiles look better than what they are, let's just go back up to the Basics tab. At the moment, we can see the profile is set to Adobe Color, so let's just try some of the others. That one there, that one, 
Actually, no, I'm going to keep it to Adobe Color. So that at the moment is all I want to do in Lightroom. We will head back, but there are a few things I need to do in Photoshop before we do those. So now let's just go to Photo, Edit in, Adobe Photoshop 2022. Okay, so now that we're in Photoshop, here's what I want to do. I want to first of all fix this chair here. I don't like the way that this cover has got this kind of indentation. So to do that, I want to get my lasso tool, make a very loose selection around the chair cover there, and also include the area that I want to fill it in with. So then we'll go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. We can see over on the right hand side, it actually really quickly, that's just a fantastic job. Very happy with that. So yeah, I'm going to leave that. And you know what? I'm going to save it out on the current layer. Don't need to make any changes to that whatsoever. So we'll just click OK. That was just incredible. Next thing I do, because it's a bit distracting to me, is this cover that the dog's actually lying on doesn't cover the uh, part of the cushion here. So what I'll do is first of all, add a new blank layer. Let's get the uh, clone stamp tool, making sure in the options bar at the top of the screen there, it's set to current and below. Because we're using a blank layer, we need something underneath it to, to clone from. So let's just increase the size of the clone stamp tool with my right square bracket key. I'll sample area maybe down here and just a few very quick dabs just over it like so. So there you go. That's just very quickly covered that over. The next thing I'll do, in fact, let's just flatten that. We don't need to keep that either. So flatten image. Next thing I'll do is actually something I did on this dog's owner, Trigger, my friend Trigger. I did a video on this uh, a couple of weeks back now showing how you can use this depth blur neural filter in Photoshop to really create a, a lot more of a punch and depth and dimension to your images. So I'm going to do that on this one here. So what I will do is go to Filter and Neural Filters. Over on the right hand side here, this is the one. It's in the betas, but we've got this depth blur. Let me just turn that one on. And rather than letting the AI tell me what it thinks it needs to have in focus and out of focus, I'm just going to come over into the preview area here where we've got the focal point and I'm just going to press down over the dog's face. That's going to put a focus point saying that is where the focus is to be. Everywhere else, which I can control using this focal range, is what will be out of focus. So uh, we can see already actually over in the main preview area just here, that's looking good. Let's just uh, increase the amount of blur on that. And I might also just increase that focal range so that it's not going to be completely blurring out the dog's paws. We want the focal range to kind of creep in a little bit more at the front here. So we'll just increase the focal range over to the right hand side. And again, if you've not seen the video on this, I'll leave a link to the kind of in-depth example of how you use this in the description. OK, so to output this, I'm actually going to create a new layer and then click OK. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I just want to make sure that it hasn't done anything a little bit weird. And in fact, it has just a tiny bit the way it smudged the arm on the chair. So what I'll do is I'll just add a layer mask, get a brush, we'll get a black foreground color, making sure that the actual hardness is at zero, and I'll just decrease it, and I'll just kind of brush over just to bring back that original part of the, the arm there on the chair so it doesn't look like it's been smudged out. So that's looking good. Go around the rest of the image. Okay, oh, in fact, I might just clear that up as well. Let's just add a new blank layer, get that clone stamp tool again. I'll sample some area just up here just to get rid of that bit that's distracting there where the cushion isn't and we'll just get the eraser real quick way of doing this here let's just erase it off the arm just something like that is fine okay cool like in that now the last thing i'll do in photoshop is my 2010 technique which i love for really giving images that kind of pop where it almost looks like they're coming forward of the screen. It looks great on the screen, but when you print them as well, it's almost like you can reach out and touch it. Again, I've done a video on that. Check out the description for that one. But for this technique, I am going to flatten all of these layers here. I'll then create a copy by pressing Command or Control J. And on this one, we'll go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Now, like I've shown before when I've shown this technique, the amount and radius are always going to be the same. The threshold's at zero. And for my technique, we're going to go for 20 in the amount, which means 20 in the radius. And if I put the cursor over the top of the dog's face, you'll get to see the preview in here. So now if I press down and release, press down and release, you can see that it's adding contrast to it. So we'll click OK. At the moment, that contrast has been added to the entire picture, which we don't want. So I'm going to add a black layer mask to this one here by holding down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows, 
clicking on the layer mask icon to hide it, get a brush, let's just zoom in, white foreground color, again, making sure that brush is nice and soft, and we'll just brush over the dog's face, and also his body, actually, let's give it a little bit of punch onto the body there. And for the last part of the technique, we'll create a merged or stamp layer to the top of the layer stack, holding down the Shift, Option, Command, and E keys on Mac, or Shift, Alt, Control, and E keys on Windows. Then we'll go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and this time, instead of 20, we put in 10. So it's 20, 10 technique. Click OK. Add a black layer mask to that layer there. Get a brush with a white foreground color, and I'm just going to paint it across the dog's eyes and on his nose. So now if we do all these layers off and on, you can see hopefully there how that's making that dog's face really kind of come forward, gives it a lot more depth and dimension. All right, I'm going to flatten that as well. So now that we've done that, we'll just go to File and Save, and that's going to save the image from Photoshop, dynamic linking it back over into Lightroom so we can just add those final finishing touches. So now it's just a case of adding those essential finishing touches. So I'll go to the left side of the screen and go to the presets. In here, in the user presets folder, there are a number of my own presets and the one I'm going to use is Cinematic Seaside. Now this one isn't originally made for portraits, but I am loving what it does on this picture. The great thing about the presets is that you can tweak them even further because all of the adjustment settings are available, unlike using a profile. So I'm going to go into the HSL section and the luminance and darken down the brightness of the blanket that the dog is lying on by dragging the yellow slider across to the left. I think then I'll go back to the masking and use a brush to then increase the exposure on the dog's face. I think the preset has maybe darkened it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to finish off with some dodging and burning. So I'll add another mask, I'll use a brush, and I'll increase the exposure and just add a few brush strokes over the highlights on the dog's face and over the dog's ears. Then I'll add another mask, I use another brush and reduce the exposure to darken down the mid-tones and shadow areas either side of those highlights. So this is before and this is after. Okay, I reckon we're done. Let's take a look at the before and after. So we'll go to the grid view, click on the original image, then shift click on the retouched version. Then I'll press C to go to compare view. On the left is the original, and on the right is our final retouched dog portrait. Now there were just a few extra things that I did in the original edit that I didn't have time to show in this video, and there are only just a few things, just things like uh, re reducing the shine on the actual arms of the chair, where I use that content wear fill to fill in that kind of background bit, I then used liquify afterwards just to push in a little bit and vary the shape so it w wasn't quite so uniform, and also on the dog's face, there were just a few little specks of dust and eye snot on, on his nose, so I got rid of those. But I'm really glad to say that Trigger, the dog's owner, was very, very happy with his print. So mission accomplished, best feeling ever. So I really hope that's been useful, a retouch from start to finish, something I haven't done on this channel for quite a while. Uh, if it has been useful, give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, click on that subscribe button, because that's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.